And we also want to uh, check in with Cal OES. We have CBS 13's Marissa Perlman at Cal OES headquarters now. We want to go live to her. Uh, we spoke with a representative from there earlier. And Marissa, tell us about what you're hearing from them right now on reports of damage and what they are doing uh, as they try to manage all of the reports coming in. Yeah, this is all things that Cal OES is planning to monitor in the coming hours. Here you can see on the, the board behind me, they're watching all of the big media reports and fielding those same calls that we've been talking about for the past hour or so. I want to bring in Brian Ferguson here with Cal OES. Brian, thank you for, for joining us. And I know we were talking today. Today was we were supposed to be talking about heat. You guys were planning to talk about how to keep your pets safe. And then suddenly we had a big turn of events today. You know, in California, it's always something. We, uh, we're, we're really lucky to have the best first responder system in the, in the world, but uh, certainly uh, an unexpected day, and uh, we're actively working on these earthquakes now. And so talk to me a little bit about what's happening here. And, and surprisingly, normally today we weren't preparing to have this many people here in the building, but luckily there, there are some um, Cal OES staff here, you know, fielding calls and, and able to respond to that. So that was kind of a lucky turn of events. Yeah, so, we, you know, we're, we have what we call duty officers. So these are people across discipline who are checking in with their counterparts in fire, law, emergency services, understanding what is happening in these local communities to try to get real-time information. So if there's things they need or support, we as a state can provide that. It could be basic things like generators or bottled water. Is there a need for shelters? Doesn't seem like that at this point with this emergency, but that's our job is to provide those resources to local communities. Yeah, and I think that's the big question, right, is we're looking for any reports of, of damage, especially if we're talking, as, as we're talking about the many reports of aftershock. So at this point, is there any update to that? Still very early. The reports we have at this point is there's not significant damage or injuries, but this is a rapidly evolving situation. We are still collecting information. Even the local communities are evaluating what it looks like to them if there's any property damage. Maybe there was someone who had an injury that we didn't immediately hear about. Um, but the ultimate goal is that we are surveying things rapidly and able to, to deploy resources if it becomes necessary. And I, I know earlier um, uh, on our CBS 13 at 4 o'clock, we were talking about how there's this potentially false sense of security if you live in the city of Sacramento, but that there should be, you know, a kind of a, a warning to those who live to be prepared in that area. You know what? No matter where you live in California, you're an earthquake country. So it's important that Californians think about that, whether you're in Sacramento, L.A., the Bay Area, or someplace in between, there are steps you can take now. And this is a good reminder that have a family emergency plan. You know, we actually have an earthquake early warning phone application in California may not need think you need it in Sacramento today proves you do so it's called the my shake app and you can go get it through the Google uh, or Android store and uh, make sure that you get those advanced warning those extra seconds could be the difference between life and death if we were to have a bigger earthquake yeah, absolutely and for people today those who may have felt it especially in the city center who didn't have that app before may be getting it talk to me brian before i let you go you know what happens now in the next couple of hours sure so what we're going to continue to do is evaluate what's happening on the ground hear from the local police fire in the communities of markleyville uh, in san joaquin county where the other earthquake occurred and also make sure we're on guard if there were to be a subsequent earthquake, certainly almost two years ago when we had the Ridgecrest earthquake, we had a smaller earthquake, which is followed by a larger earthquake. That's not, not always statistically what happens, but certainly we want to be prepared and we want to understand what the impacts are so we can keep people safe and we're ready. Absolutely. We'll be in touch throughout into the evening. Thank you so much, Brian Ferguson with Cala OES. And we'll be bringing you those updates right here on CBS 13 as soon as we learn more. Back to you All guys. Right.